right, welcome back. Let's look at Kepler's laws now. Why don't we do number three? This is a good one. Then maybe I'll do, uh, maybe I'll do one more. Um, I guess I could do number seven. And then, yeah, let's just do three and seven for now, because I'll be happy to do a bunch on Monday. If a satellite is to orbit Earth at an altitude of one times 10 to the third kilometers, what would its period be? Okay. So I want the period. I, I want the period. If a satellite is orbiting Earth, this is a clue that would help me find the radius. And if I knew, if I knew Kepler's constant for the Earth as it orbits the Sun, okay, um, I could. No, this isn't there. This is a satellite, sorry. Sorry, this is a satellite orbiting Earth. If I knew what Kepler's constant was for the Earth, because all objects that orbit the Earth are going to have the same Kepler's constant. Um, if I knew what Kepler's constant was, I could solve for T, okay? So all I need to do is find R and find Kepler's constant somehow for the Earth. So, um, I don't know what Kepler's constant is for the Earth, and... The radius has a little kick. So you know what? Let's take care of the radius first. If you're at an altitude above the Earth, that is not the radius. What we're missing is the radius of Earth here. Okay? Because above that, that distance is basically uh, a 1,000 kilometers, it looks like. Okay? So a 1,000 kilometers. Let me get that into meters. That's really bugging me. Okay? Because <clears throat> we got to deal with meters for all of this. So this would basically be 1 times 10 to the 6th meters, okay? Would be the altitude. But this distance in here, I did not draw this proportionally at all. <laughs> it's 6.38 times 10 to the 6th meters. I got that from the, looking at your formula sheet on the, the planetary data table, okay? So in total then, I add those together. I'm going to get a radius, an orbital radius. That's why we say orbital radius from the center of the Earth out to the satellite. It's going to be 7.38 times 10 to the 6th meters. Okay? So that's great. That gave me the radius, but still don't know what Kepler's constant is. Now watch this. Kepler's constant, not only does it equal t squared over r cubed, it also equals 4 pi squared over gm1. What's really slick about this is the 4 pi squared and g, those are all constants. Like, those are the same all the time. M1 is the mass of the planet that all of the uh, satellites, in this case, are orbiting, and that is Earth. Earth has a mass of 5.97 times 10 to the 24th kilograms. Again, I got that from my planetary data table. So, sorry I'm writing all over the place here because I don't have a lot of space. But what that means is I can punch in I can go 4 pi squared over g times 5.97 to the 24th kilograms. That is going to equal t squared over the radius, 7.38 times 10 to the 6th meters. But that number is cubed. Whoa. So if I'm going to solve for t squared, or just for t then, let me speed this up a little bit t is going to have to equal the square root of 4 pi squared times 7.38 to the 6th meters cubed divided by g times 5.97 to the 24th kilograms. Okay, so see how complex this gets? Fairly quickly, but it's not impossible. I strongly recommend that you get all of this stuff done first in a mathematical calculation, and then you square root it, okay? If you try and do it all at once, I mean, it's possible, but man, you gotta get all of your, you gotta get all your brackets um, in the right place, and you have to actually cube something here. So on your calculator, sorry, I mean, I don't, my calculator has a, a cube root function, but on your TI-84s, uh, you have to hit math 
and then it's like number three or number four, I can't remember, you have to hit math, and then it brings up some options to do cube roots or cubed, okay, or x to the x cubed, x to the power of three, okay? So you have to, you have to you get used to that on your calculator, and then you have to be really careful in entering all these numbers, okay? So use your EE button, okay? Keep your life simple. We got these big numbers, right? 7.38 times 10 to the 6th. Then you got 5.97 times 10 to the 24th. Use the E button and it'll make it a lot easier. You won't have to stress about brackets and you won't make mistakes as often, okay? I, there's really, man, I'm pushing you really hard on the entry here. This is, this is going to ma maximize your ability to enter numbers accurately, okay? It'll force you to do that. So anyway, let's, um, I'm just typing mine in right now, uh, 7.38 um, E to the 6th, but that number gets cubed. Okay, and I divide that by 6.67 exponent to the negative 11. Now you have to do the denominator in brackets, okay? So I'm doing that right now. Okay, and then uh, when I'm all done with that number, I have to square root that. Okay, so whew, when all that is done, I'm writing everywhere, sorry, just because I need space. There is six, I got 6.31 times 10 to the third seconds. Um, is that an answer? Yay, there it is. Physics works. Okay, now again, I'm going super fast here. Um, you've got to be able to slow down and um, execute this mathematical function, okay? But I'm getting it from using Kepler's law, Kepler's. Um, Third law, okay? Let's jump to seven. Again, you can slow this video down, replay it, whatever you need to do. Um, what's the mass of a star if Kepler's constant for that star is this? You know, don't be, don't be scared of these units. They're, they work on purpose with Kepler's constant. If you want to get the mass of a star, if you know Kepler's constant, I want you to see how slick this is. Kepler's constant will also just equal what I wrote up there, okay? I know it equals t squared over r cubed. That was um, Kepler's deduction, but com like sol or sorry, solving that with the force of gravity, you can also express Kepler's constant like this. So if you need to solve for, Kep for the mass of the planet, then very carefully you manipulate this expression to solve for m1, okay? So effectively, I would times both sides by m1, and I would divide both sides by k, and that means that k and m1 switch places. So m1 would then look like this. It would be 4 pi squared divided by, in brackets, g times k. All right? So you have to do the denominator separately. Otherwise, you'll never get it. Um, but yeah, 4 pi squared, that's just a constant. Um, 6.67 to the negative 11. Oh, whoops. I made that negative to start with. Just a second. 4. Um, wait, I'm going to use my other calculator. 4 pi squared, divided by 6 point, um, yes, divided by 6.67, e to the negative 11, in brackets times this number k, which is 5.6 to the negative 24, and, um, yeah, uh, I got 1.06 to the 35, hopefully that's up here. Oh, looks like it is. 1.06 1. times 10 to the 35. So that, actually, let me double check the answer there for that one. Sorry, whoops, that was number, that was number seven. So number seven is C, hallelujah. So, yep, anyway, I'll be able to, I'll be ready to do more of these on Monday, but um, that is going to be, yeah, the others are going to deal with the second formula moving forward. So anyway, hopefully that's helpful to start with. We'll see you Monday.